So today we have the awesome Kailani Goodwin with us. She is a Sandy ambassador and Mazani artist. She is the co-founder of the Textbook Collective and the Global Artistry Council, which is huge. And she has a huge passion for sharing her knowledge of hairdressing and creating space for textured hair in our industry. So please welcome in the chats, Kailani Goodwin. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. What's up, the San Via community? What's going on? Super excited to be with you today to share with you some fundamentals of braiding. So before we get started, of course, you have to do some kind of prep work when it comes to braiding. In the chat, tell me how many of you currently braid or let me know if it's a challenge. So put uh, yes or challenge. Type it in the chat. And then we're gonna pull our first girl in to show you how you can get some uh, prep going on. Thank you so much, loving my hair too. <laughs> All right, so this is Janet, right? So anytime you can do braids on anyone, right? They can have any texture of hair, one through eight. So Mazani, we break it down to textures one through eight. One being smooth and uh, straight with a minimal wave versus, um, Texture, so highest coil of texture is texture type eight. So you have that range one through eight going from straight to wavy to curly to coily. So Janet has some texture to her hair, right? So the way I like to prep my guests before I start any kind of braiding on them is to um, smooth them out if they have texture, right? So all we did was we prepped Janet with some shampoo and conditioner and then used some 25 Miracle Milk. So Mazani 25 Miracle Milk. Let me see if I can get in on this. So Mazani 25 Miracle Milk, spread it all over. It's a leave-in conditioner. It helps to detangle and everything. Hi, Andrew. <laughs> so we um, put a little bit of 25 Miracle Milk on there and then blow dried her using our Sanvia Light Professional blow dryer and our Signature Siri Paddle Brush, right? So we just went through. And I'm not gonna cut the blow dryer on because I don't wanna make too much noise. That's why I did it in advance. So you can see the difference. So just went through and sectioned out, but follow the direction and down the shaft of your hair so that you don't um, disrupt the cuticle too much and you want the hair to lay smooth when you're um, before you start your braiding. So you see the difference between the natural texture and having the hair blown out. Now, if you have a guest that has straight hair, and let's say you're adding hair, right? You want, if she has straight hair and you're adding hair, what you wanna do is use the crimping iron. So I'm gonna hold this up in the camera. Hopefully you'll be able to see some of the crinkles in it, if you can see that. If you can see that, let me know in the chat. All right, so when you're adding extension hair, right? If they have straight hair, usually it has a lot of slip. So what we wanna do is go through and we want to use our Samvia texture iron and go through the hair. Can everybody see this? Let me scoot her up a little bit. Actually. And I don't have it on a super high setting. So it's on its lowest setting because all I'm trying to do is get a crimp in it. And I'm gonna give a, a close up of this a little bit later, but you're gonna just go down the hair strand and create some texture in the hair. Cause what's the, what this is gonna do is give you some grip in the hair, okay? So you see, even with the lower setting and she has a higher porosity, it changed, let's see if I can get the light to hit it right. There you go. It, get, it changed the texture of the hair slightly. So I get a little bit more grip when I'm pulling through the hair versus too much slip, okay? How's everybody feeling so far? How, I, how do I see this later, Jill said. Jill, it will be living on uh, San Via YouTube page and Facebook. Awesome. <laughs> so we're gonna get started. I already pre-prepped. This is Janet's twin, Joanna. So we're doing a few different uh, braid types, okay? We're gonna do an individual 
just plait or box braid. You can see that. We're going to do a traveling braid. You can call this a cornrow or a traveling braid. Traveling, you, it means that you can start it and have it zigzag and go in different directions. And we're going to talk about how you're able to do that as you're braiding. And then we'll even add a little bit of hair to it, okay? The last thing we're going to talk about today is kind of a little hack to do box braids and um, add extensions in it where it's not creating a knot at the base. Okay, <laughs> who's ready to get started? Give me your favorite emojis in the comment section. So that you can get a really good view, we're going to have um, Andrew switch us to a close-up so you can see everything going on. Ta-da! Awesome! <laughs> All right, so let me make sure that I have this good and tight for everybody so you can see. I'm going to switch her around and tilt her forward. So when you can see this, let me know in the chat, in the comment section. Let me know when you can see Joanna in a clear view. There we go. Perfect. Tilt this up a little bit. All right. So we're going to get started. So this is just a regular plait. So three strands. So everybody type three in the chat. And what you see as you're going up, when you start your sections, I made the, the base a little bit bigger just because she has uh, her density of hair is maybe about a medium density. So um, I split the first section and then you see the parts are not lining up. You don't want your parts to line up. You want it to lay so that when the hair lays down, you see that it takes up a little bit more uh, real estate. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much, Rhonda. Rhonda can see. Thank you for your threes and your emojis. So now we're going to use our Zambia tail comb. And I love this little tooth. So you can section in two different ways. You can either use it and draw like a pencil, right? And go across this way to create your section or your parting. Or you can take this front loose tooth at the top and come across and you still like holding it like a pencil. All right. How does everybody feeling about that? Then we're going to clip. We're going to use our dry sectioning clip and clip that hair back in a way so that it's not going to get in the way of us braiding. The next thing I'm going to do is use a, a hair dress. So for today, I'm using the um, Mazzani Rose H2O. The reason I'm using this is because I want a little bit of slip in the hair. This would be on natural, um, on my guess natural texture, and I want some moisture. So I can always go back in and add a hold um, on top of this, so like a foam wrap or something like that. But for today, I'm just going to use the foam wrap. And then there's other products you can use as well. So um, like the edge taming gel, or that's like a gel, an emollient base. So I'm just going to come down and get that slip in there so that the hair is being moisturized while I'm braiding, right? Because usually when we are braiding, our guest is gonna keep this in for a little while. These are known as protective styles. So let me turn her a little bit. Can everybody see that? So you see I've split her into three equal parts. All right, so then I'm gonna take this outside over top of the middle, I'm going to pull it taut, then grab the outside on the left hand side and pull that through the middle in between the two strands. Then I'm going to take the outside on the other side, then the outside from the left. Everything is going to the middle over top. Once I start it, you see I have it pretty tight, then I can continue to just work my way down. So you're going over with your right to the middle, over with your left to the middle. And that's how you'll work it all the way down. And then you just start to get a rhythm with your fingers. How's that feeling for everybody? Type it in the chat for me. All right. 
so you see with this rose H2O, or why I like to use it, or one of the reasons I like to use it, is because I get this awesome shine as I'm going down. So my guest hair is um, being moisturized. Now, if they have uh, straighter hair to begin with, you don't always want to use an emollient. That's when you would, or if they have like a, um, a smoother consistency or their porosity isn't um, as high, then you can use more of a whole product. Okay, so that's our first braid. We're going to do this a couple more times just to go through, and I'm going to have you walk me through it. Sectioning with my comb, <laughs> using the top, uh, top of my comb. And then think about direction that you're going to do it. So this one, so you can see it, I braided it more forward. But ideally, you don't want the braid to go into your guest's face. So what you're going to do, we're going to turn her around a little bit just to show you. And I'm going to see how, uh, how much of a contortion is that I am. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to change the direction, and I'm going to braid it more this way. So if I'm doing that, like I said, I want my braid pretty clean. So I'm going to section it the way I, in the way I want to braid. So now I have a sectioning going in between these two braids right here. Everybody see that? So now I separated it into my three pieces. Am I going outside in or am I going under? Type it in the chat. All right. <laughs> I know it's gonna take a little while. So if you said outside into the middle, you are correct. And then if I want to change the position, like I don't want it to lay too flat, what I'm gonna do is bring my hands up more and come from the top so that my braid is laying more to the center and then I can hold my finger down as I go, okay? So we're gonna tighten down, come to the middle, go outside to the middle, and then we're gonna just keep that movement and that motion going. So over. Now this is a three-strand braid, so odd number braids. Yes, thank you, Roller Girl, thank you, Rosario, thank you, Rhonda, that outside into the middle. So you're just going to keep going, and you want to make sure if I start to loosen up and I start to loosen up my tension, you see, if I just kind of gently go like this, what happens to your braid? It starts to loosen up a little bit too much, unless that's what you're going for. So if you're going for the, uh, like a lot of the wedding styles that have maybe a looser braid where you're going to disrupt the braid after you're done and kind of go in and separate, then for those situations, you're not necessarily going to use like a rose H2O product. Those situations, you want more the hair to be a little bit more loose and pliable and be able to separate it a little bit easier. So you see how you're just able to separate it and give it more of that bohemian look? That's what you want to do, okay? But if you're trying to have a style where you're braiding someone's hair and you want it to have some longevity, then it definitely needs some moisture and you need to have some tension when you're doing your braid, okay? And I like having, uh, the reason I like having a moisture product is because it helps to give me a little slip, especially when I'm working with texture here that I've blown out. And you don't wanna make it really wet. So you don't wanna, after you've blown the hair out, you don't wanna make the hair really wet, otherwise it can cause the hair to revert, which is not what we wanna do. The reason that we uh, blew out the hair is so we could get the full uh, expansion of the length. All right. You're welcome, Roller Girl. And you want to go all the way to the end. So you see, as you're going to the end, that sometimes there's like a little short piece. What you can do with that, when you bring that other piece to the center, is split that middle piece and join it with that uh, shorter piece. So that way you can keep going until the very end with your braid. All right. We're gonna have a whole bunch of tips and tricks in here. I see all the tips. <laughs> so now you see where the braid is laying. It's not laying straight forward like the other one. It's laying actually in between the two braids. 
Then if we want to change it a little bit more, you can do it from the side. So just like all of these were braided down to the side. And you see that where, let's hold her down a little bit. You see where this braid base is falling is over top of this part right here. So I'm putting my Rose H2O, which is my product of choice for this head of hair, right? It will change depending on what texture you're working with or what your end goal is regarding your braid. Then what is my next step? How many sections am I type of, uh, putting this into? I'll go in slow motion. Because <laughs> I know there's a little bit of a delay. So we're going to come up. I think I'm stopping it. So I have my one, two, three sections. So if you said three, good job. All right, then we're going to come across. I'm going to have that tension in here because I don't want to bubble up too much at the root. And then we're going to braid outside into the center. Now with odd, odd strand braids, you're braiding um, over top. If you can come from underneath, and all it will do is change the how the braid looks. So let's do it from underneath. All right, Carolina from Argentina. How are you doing today? And thank you everybody for answering three. You got it. So now if I was uh, there is a way to do, so I'm doing an overhand braid. You can also do underhand. If you're doing underhand, you're gonna start with your middle and bring that to the outside. Middle to the outside. Now, when you're uh, doing a underhand braid, it just looks slightly different. Not too much different, but if you notice, let me finish it before I say anything. <laughs> Do you notice a difference between the two? So your underhand braid, the center is pointing up. Your overhand braid, your center is pointing down. You see that? So it's almost like little arrows. So when you do an underhand, you're coming underneath into the middle. All right, you all are on it, I love it. So we're just gonna, and then you, like I said, you'll get in a little rhythm and keeping your fingers taut up to the braid helps it stay tight all the way down. Now, I do not claim to be the fastest braider in the world. I actually had, I think, which who was the almost the fastest braider in the world, braid my hair one summer. And she finished my whole head in three hours. Her fingers were moving so fast. I just couldn't imagine how fast her fingers were moving. All right. So this is the end result of doing your box braid. Showing you different directions, how it looks. And this is with having a base of about... I'll say about an inch box, box base, okay, square base. Now let's talk about our traveling braid. Who's heard of a traveling braid before? If you've heard of traveling braid, uh, type it in the comments, in the chat. So you see, I started, I crimped her hair. That's why I said you're going to get an up-close view because of what the hair looks like. So this is what the extension hair looks like, okay? Now, if I'm just starting the braid and I want to just braid her hair, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to crimp this section really quickly with my texture iron. And you just, like I said, it doesn't need to be on a super high setting, but enough so that you get that texture into the hair. And you don't want to take um, a section that's too, too big. So at least I like doing about half the width of my texture iron. 
So I make sure that texture gets all the way through. Moving all the way down. So now if I'm starting this without any extension here, I'm taking my first section. Can you see that? All right. So shiny. Yes. Thank you, Katie. Perfect. Then you're going to, just like we did with your box spray, you're going to split, split it into three. Come under. So for a raised braid, you want to have, you want to come under from the bottom. Otherwise, it'll be more like a, a Dutch braid or a French braid where it goes into itself. Okay. So I've just gone over. Let's start that again. So you can see what I'm talking about. I'm a little vertically challenged. So. All right, so we have our three sections. I'm going to come under into the middle, under into the middle. Then I'm going to, as I'm grabbing this outside to the center, I'm going to incorporate a little bit more hair. I'm going to incorporate hair. So if you want like a super straight, you can use your nail. You can use a, a section stick or a comb. Nails are great to have for braiding. Then we're going to grab from the other side. Just going to pinch that hair. And if you want it to be more centered, then you can grab all the way across. Okay. I'm going to come across. I have this hair coming from the center. Grabbing that next section behind. Coming up from underneath. Grabbing that next section. So every time I'm coming to the center, I'm grabbing hair from behind it. Now, if I want it to travel, I'm going to grab closer to one side than the other. Let me turn it. So let's say I want the braid to start coming down this way. I'm going to have this hair. I'm pulling it taut still. I'm going to bring it down closer to this part that's on this side. Kelly, you said your extensions are always too loose. Catherine, you said traveling braids uh, is, is equal to cornrows. Traveling braid, so this is doing a cornrow as a traveling braid. Traveling braid means that it's you're manipulating the direction that it's going, right? So if you wanted to hook a hard right here, you can come all the way down. So if I wanted to continue this braid down this way, I could continue it down over top of this other braid and then come back up and then bring it into back into the braid, back into the braid base where the rest of the hair is. So that is a traveling braid. So when I'm changing the direction and it's not going straight down, so corn rows, you're more so uh, going straight back. But when you're starting to create designs, it's like a traveling braid. Okay. Awesome. You're welcome, Catherine. So we're going to keep going back. I'm going to turn her around a little bit. And then this is a part also when you start to get your guests to start shifting their head position so that you have a base to um, put pressure on. Okay. So when you start to get to the back, you're going to have them tilt their head forward a little bit. So I'm coming around. I'm going to take a section all the way across because I'm coming back into my braid. So now let's say that she doesn't have a lot of uh, length and she wants to get a little bit more length. Typically, if I know I'm adding uh, extensions to the hair, I'll start it at the beginning. But for all intents and purposes, for this educational experience, <laughs> we're going to start adding hair here. OK, so I want to. I have my hair uh, pre-sectioned out to my right. 
How do you say, shall I measure the tension so it's not too tight? Okay, so Kelly, how do you measure it so it's not too tight? If your guest is wincing, <laughs> like if they're feeling, like you can ask your guest if it feels too tight as you're doing it, but you wanna hold, have it taut enough so it's laying um, laying against the scalp. So that's why I said product helps and keep in mind that I haven't, I wasn't using products on this section, okay? So the way I incorporate my extension here is that piece that's in that has just come to the middle. I incorporated that loop of hair, so it's split in half. The top part of this, I'm going to incorporate to the section that went just went to the outside. And then I'm going to come underneath and grab that hair to the left. Now I can add another piece of extension hair here. which I will. So here I'm coming to the center. I'm gonna grab that extension here and then pull that piece that was in the center over to the side. Oh, there we go. So now I have that hair incorporated. This is really a lot of fun trying to do this on camera, by the way. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna come through. And you can keep adding like smaller pieces and what it'll do is just start to give you enough hair as you get to the length of the hair to just continue braiding all the way down, okay? Yes, cornrows are so pretty, Julie. Have I ever had a client whose scalp buckles? Yes. I have. So they have a loose scalp. Um, I have had a guest who's, uh, whose scalp bu buckles. They have a loose scalp. Um, in those cases, I just let them know that um, if their braids are still going to be straight, their parts are still going to be straight, but they have a loose scalp. So their scalp is going to buckle underneath the braid. There's nothing that you can do <laughs> about that because um, that's what their natural scalp is doing. It's just loose. So then as I said before, I'm going to keep tilting her down. And keep adding that hair as I go to that center piece. And if your guest has long hair and they just want to play with colors, you can do that as well. Just incorporate as they go. And they don't, it doesn't have to take over. Okay. Just trying to grab this little loop. It doesn't have to take over um, the color of their hair in the braid unless you want it to. If you do, that's when you're doing more of a feed in type situation with more, like almost every, every time you're coming in, you're feeding um, your extension hair in. And ideally, you wanna use a, a pre stretch. Hair. And you notice, did you see what I just did? So as you start to braid with extension hair, you'll start to get loose pieces. You want to pull your um, pull your hair through or put your hands through so it doesn't start to create a knot at the bottom. And then we're just going to continue this all the way down. And you see how it's still tight and your um, braid's just going to have like a little bit more girth to it. Okay. So versus if it was just a natural hair. So you see the difference? And depending on how much hair that you're adding, um, it could uh, be a little bit, a little bit more uh, thickness to your braid. And then we're just going to go all the way down. So what I was saying was, you can use. Um, I like using the pre-stretch hair. Uh, you can also use something called Kanekalon hair, which is um, synthetic as well. And you braid all the way down. So once you've gotten down to their base, you just continue braiding because you don't want it to go out. Now, if you're going to stop it at a certain point, you can always grab um, an elastic to tie off the ends until you uh, dip their hair in order to set the hair. And when I say dip the hair, it means that you're going to do it with hot water, okay? Boiling water, actually. 
but you're not dipping your guest hair into it. You're dipping the extension hair into it. I'm always, uh, Julie says, I'm always fingers and thumbs when it comes to cornrows. So honestly, Julie, all it does is take some practice. I was that little girl that was always, um, <laughs> I don't know if you remember Cabbage Patch dolls or anything like that, but I was always um, practicing my braiding on dolls. And we, as hairstylists, we have the amazing ability to um, to use um, mannequin heads, right? So we have these, all these amazing mannequin heads with different textures, and we're able to do that. So that's how you can braid all the way down to the bottom or even a little bit further. It just depends on where your guest wants their length to, to sit, right? Now let's talk about my little hack because like most people, our fingers don't always work like I want them to, right? Uh, if it's their hair, do you just put on an elastic band at the bottom? Yes. So Lisa, you asked if it's their hair. Yes, you can just put an elastic band at the bottom to seal it off. And then what I um, would do to go uh, go back and just keep in mind, depending on how they sleep, um, how they take care of their hair at night in terms of um, tying their hair down, sleeping on a satin pillowcase, um, that'll judge uh, how quickly it might start to frizz or, or what have you. But after I'm done with um, doing a natural, I'll put like some foam wrap over top of it so I can get more of a set and I would sit them under a hair dryer with a, um, oh my gosh, I can't think of the word. It's not the sandy strip, but it's uh, like a wrap strip. I would put it around their hair to help lay that um, lay that down. Okay. All right, Donna, you have a hard time braiding. Your hands have been cut, and I have a finger on both hands that doesn't bend. Ah. So in terms of that, this might this little hack that I'm about to do might help you, Donna and Kelly. Okay. So we're gonna turn. Joanna around a little bit more and we're going to show you a little a little bit of a hack using an elastic so if you're able to get the hair into small ponytails um it might help you out in terms of getting a little bit more tension and also being able to um braid the hair and at the end of the day like I said before you work with what you have right so if you have to adjust based on um being able to bend your fingers then it's just gonna take some practice to get used to it, okay? So we're gonna take our comb, I'm gonna come across, and this is the last part of our section. I'm gonna clip this up out of the way, our dry sectioning clip. And you see I've also alternated or come across the part on either side so it's just not hanging down in straight rows. Bend her back just a little bit. And I'm just gonna split this section into two. All right. Yeah, for um, Donna and Kelly, I would don't uh, don't limit yourself necessarily on being able to bend your fingers. Like I said, just practice and um, make a make adjustments to how your your body is and how you need to operate, okay? So we're going to take an elastic and I love these little elastics because they're they're not super um, grippy on the hair, right? So they are the slip elastics. I'm going to come in from underneath, try to hold it as taut as I can. And I want to make sure that I'm in the center of my section with my elastic. And I'm going to come across. I'm just going to go back and forth. until I have a good enough tension. Like I said, not to, you don't wanna give your head, uh, your guests headaches and all of that stuff by the time they leave. Um, I, I just personally, as a professional, as a um, hairstylist, even as a, a guest, a client, I don't like my braids so tight that I'm gonna have a headache by the time I leave. I don't wanna have to take ibuprofen. I don't wanna you know, feel like my hair is coming out of my follicles, okay? so. This, for adding hair, you can use a latch hook. I love latch hooks. There's so many different uh, uses with a latch hook, okay? So we're gonna take this latch hook, I'm gonna come across the bottom underneath 
my rubber band. Hold up. My finger is covering it. So I'm going to come underneath horizontally. I'm going to open up my fingers and get that hair underneath that hook. Close that hook section. And then I'm going to pull that hair all the way through. And then I have my first section for my braid. Yes? Let me turn it around so you can see. So there's one half of it, and then there's the other half. Now, I'm going to split. I'm going to split this little ponytail in half. So that way I still have that tension up against the scalp. Yes, Kelly, you do have to be careful of uh, alopecia traction, traction alopecia, for sure. I had a, um, one of my cousins had her hair braided and um, her hair was braided so tight towards her front hairline, which is where more fragile hair is, that um, she ended up losing that hair in the front, right? So the, her hair got so thin and actually um, her hair got pulled out like at the follicle in the front because her hair was too tight. So do not, do not pull your hair that tight. Everybody put that in the chat. Do not pull your guest hair so tight that you're pulling their hair out by the follicle. <laughs> You miss, Julie, you missed the very beginning. Did I put any product in the hair? Yes, I did put a little bit of the uh, the Rose H2O. And for these, I did not, uh, if I wanted to, I could have crimped the hair as well. Depends on how, how much texture I want to see in the hair. Oh, Kathleen, longtime braider. Glad to have you here. Fantastic. So I do not claim to be a longtime baiter by any stretch of the imagination, but I do like to share uh, information for people just starting out and, you know, getting the hang of doing new techniques like braiding. And there's all different kinds of braids. So maybe I'll come back on later and or at an, on another day and we'll do different kinds of braids. OK, so we split it in the middle. I have the band a little bit tighter to the scalp in the middle. That's how I'm splitting it. Then I'm gonna take that piece I just pulled through the middle, put those pieces together. That's my third strand. I'm gonna come over the top and make sure that my hair still stays taut so I can hold it down here in the middle until I do a couple of passes. And then I'm just gonna con continue to braid my way down. And you see, it's starting to tingle. So every time you do a braid when you're working with long hair, it'll start to uh, braid at the bottom as well. You want to just pull your fingers through to make sure you're not getting those tangles. OK. So that, like I said, this is just a little a little tip or trick as you're practicing um, with especially like individual braids. To allow you to get the look that you're trying to get until you're able to add hair without adding the elastic. And you see with just doing the two pieces that I did, it actually takes over the majority of the color of the braid, but you still see little bits and pieces of our, of Joanna's natural hair. Awesome. So on higher texture types, you can use Rose H2O. You can also use on higher texture types, um, more of a, like a pomade gel, right? So a pomade gel type product, um, that can help you lay a little bit flatter, more at the root. And also depending on um, how tight the texture is, it can help keep your uh, hair smooth through the braiding process. But because she's only a texture type, I'll say like a four or five, or no, she's about a five. So she's about a five. Um, so when I blew her hair out, I didn't need um, that much of the hold. I actually wanted to have a little bit more moisture. And then I would go back over top with a foam wrap after I was done. Where can I buy this product? You're in the UK. Let me check on that, Julie. If you can DM me on Instagram and I can find out if uh, we have... Lazani in the UK. Okay. If you have, I think it's on Amazon, maybe. 
and also on uh, hair.com, I believe as well. And Sephora should have Mazzani products as well. Can you use leave-in conditioner? Yes, you can use leave-in conditioner. All right. So we're just gonna continue braiding all the way down. And like I said, you can braid all the way until the length that your guest wants, or at least braid all the way down to where your braid is not gonna come out too much until you're finished with the ends, right? So these were braided down all the way to the ends. So you can use leave-in conditioner. Like I said, depending on the texture type that you're working on, what you want your end result to be um, in terms of braiding with a uh, leave-in conditioner while you're doing it, you just don't want to get the hair uh, wet. And if you're needing a little bit of slip, so if you did put crimps in the hair and you're trying to get a little slip, you can use the um, leave-in conditioner in the hair to give you that little slip as you go through. What if you only want shoulder length? So if you only want shoulder length, what you can do is adjust your um, your hair, your extension hair. So instead of, or getting shorter extension hair. So this is about, I'd say 18 inches long. So at the half mark, this is probably about 18 to 20 inches long. What I would do is I would either cut before I start or I would just adjust where my loop starts so that I would get more of a shorter braid at the end and then I'd be able to cut this off, okay? How is everybody feeling about this technique so far? And what I'm telling you in terms of the products that I'm using and everything, like I said, there are a number of products that you can use. Um, Julie said that she that she asked about using leave-in conditioner. So you can use leave-in conditioner. Um, you can use, like I said, uh, more of a gel pomade. You can use like an edge taming gel, which is like a gel pomade, right? Or you can use um, something that has a little bit more moisture. Like it all depends on what the hair needs that you're uh, putting it on, whether you're doing it more for like a photo shoot, shoot type situation. So if I am doing more for a photo shoot, then yeah, I would probably use my leave-in conditioner because that's something that I can just adjust. I can take down. But if it's something that has some longevity, I want to make sure that my guest has some moisture in their hair. Okay. All right. Yes. Loving it. Fantastic. So let's just do this one. We're going to come across the middle. Turn her around a little bit so you can see. So I have my hook coming across the middle. Taking my fingers, pushing that hair down under that hoop, closing my hook, bringing it across. Then I'm splitting this hair, their natural hair, in the middle so I can keep it tight and close to the scalp. And I'm going to add my second piece of hair. So I have a little rack that's like almost like a thread, uh, thread spool rack that I separate and put the hair on before I would start um, braiding. That way it just allows you to get into a rhythm with that as well. All right. So we're coming down, holding that taut. Where did I say that the middle section is gonna be? Type it in the, um, type it in the chat. <clears throat> Am I pulling this together? Is this gonna be my third strand or what's going on with that middle? Making sure that I'm taut. Wrap it around. And the other thing is you want to make sure that you're using a, uh, a color band that's close to their natural hair, right? Because this is a hack for you so that you can get used to it. So I would start doing this on like models or even if you were doing a, like a photo shoot so that you could quickly get it done. Awesome, Kathleen, I'm glad you're liking the class. Carmen, you said you need to be, see the beginning now. 
can have um, the recording should be available hopefully soon. So we're going to braid all the way down. And as I said before, when you're working with like Kinecolon or like a pre-stretch hair, once you have passed their um, your guest natural texture, that's another place where you can start to set that braid. But I would set the braid once I uh, braid all the way down and you can decide where you want it to stop. But the ideal thing to do would be to make sure that you have uh, thinner hair more towards the end so you can get that braid like locked in without having to put an elastic on the ends if it's extensions. I am glad all of you are enjoying the class. Fantastic. Yes, and you, uh, you can move your body away from your gas while you're braiding, right? This will just allow you to keep the tension in the hair as you're braiding. And then did the middle become the right side? So when I put the two extension pieces together to be my third piece in the middle, yes. So I went from outside in. So my left side, so I had two pieces of hair on either side, each had uh, extension hair with the natural hair. That was the hair that was in the band. Then when I pulled that third piece through the middle, that piece became my third hair strand. So when I'm starting my braid, just like when we started with the um, original box braid, we started from the outside into the middle. So that middle piece that was just extension hair went to the outside. And that hair that was uh, both the natural and extension hair came to the middle. Then your hair from this side with the extension hair is going to come to the middle. And that hair that came from the other side will come to the left. Did that answer your question, Donna? If not, let me see if we can manage to do one more. So we'll do this. So I'll split this in the middle. I'm gonna do this freehand as well. Donna, you said yes, perfect. So now if I did this, and then had this piece come from the middle. Actually, I would put the middle in first if I'm not doing it with a band. Put the middle in first. And I'd have this hair across the top. Bring this hair down in the middle over top of my centerpiece. That becomes my third strand of hair. And I'm doing this in a really awkward position, so please mind the tightness. So as I said before, that middle piece is going to become the outside. And then that outside is going to the middle. So as I'm braiding, you're always coming from the outside. So those of you who said you have like loose braids, that does have to do with the tension that you put up at the top. So you notice that it sl uh, slid a little bit because I wasn't able to put tension in because of the direction that I'm trying to braid right now. Yes, yeah. Julie, good point. It does make the hair um, look more thick. I love doing uh, braids. It's like a protective style. So everybody put protective style in the chat. So braids are a good way if you're adding extensions to the hair. It's a, a protective style, meaning can you take a break from styling? You still need to take care of your scalp, of course, because healthy hair, healthy scalp. But it's a good way um, if your guest wants to have fuller, thicker braids, right? So if you see the difference between just having your natural or I guess natural hair going into a braid, unless they have super coarse, dense hair, uh, their braids could look like this. But if they don't, adding hair to it can make it... Uh, look more full, more thick, right? And what this also does, what I also love about this is they'll be able to move their hair around in different directions, right? So if they wanted to pull their hair up in a ponytail, they can pull it up in a ponytail. Here, let me pull her back a little bit so you can see. 
So if I want to pull her hair up in a ponytail after and just have a high pony, you could do that. If you wanted to pull it into a mid ponytail, there's just different ways. Thank you, Andrew. There's different ways that you would be able to um, style the braids once you do it, even with the hat or if you are, uh, if you have the dexterity enough uh, to do it without doing the bands, that's a good way. Um, the bands are just a, a quick and easy way that you can get started in a way that you can practice to kind of just get used to the motion of adding hair, right? And then, like I said, you can move the hair around. So this would be, I guess, considered more of like a, I guess a knotless braid of sorts, but like a hat, not this braid. Because <laughs> sometimes we need a little help, right? So how's everybody feeling today? So we covered uh, some individual braids with the natural hair. We covered a traveling braid, then adding hair into that traveling braid and finishing that out. And we also talked about um, doing like a little hack with a kind of knotless braid technique with adding hair. So <laughs> we had some tips and tricks in terms of different products to use from 25 Miracle uh, Milk as, your, as a leave-in conditioner to prep the hair to blow it off. You're dealing with higher textures. We talked about uh, using our Sanvia texture iron um, to add some texture into the hair so that you could um, just create uh, or get that grip that you need in order to keep that tension and everything in the hair. And we also uh, just talked about different products and when you would use them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and when or who this might be for. So I hope you enjoyed this class. I had so much fun with you. Thank you for commenting and doing everything in the chat and just being engaged. I so appreciate you taking your time out with me today. <laughs> Thank you, Rhonda. <laughs> Hi, Andrew. <laughs> hey, Kailani. That was awesome. Great education as always. And, you know, the response is so positive because I think a lot of times this is the type of education that we do. We kind of have to invest quite a bit for. And so your generosity to offer this in depth of a class um, completely for free is just fantastic. So thank you for your generosity. No problem. All right. And we will see you back soon for more education. Please go follow Kailani over on Instagram because she does offer some incredible, incredible stuff. And um, great Mizani classes as well. So definitely go give her a follow. Thank you so much, Kailani. You're welcome. Have a great day, everybody.